Here we have the Acme Corporation, who is owned by D-Boss, and he signs all the contracts. He wants to get an email service for his company, and he's an employee of the Acme Corporation and will be using email to communicate with the email, I'm sorry, with the Acme customers. He's a sales rep. Mr. Boss wants the email service to be available most of the day, seven days a week, with minimal interruptions, which sounds reasonable. And in this simple scenario, we've identified five key assets that we want under control. And in things that we want under control are called configuration items, and they belong in the configuration management database. Here we have this, uh, the Acme Corporation. We have DBoss. We have Andy. We have the SLA for the email service and the email service itself. So now we're going to represent the CMDB in the form of an entity relationship diagram and those of you who have a database background will be very familiar with this but it's a way of representing records or CIs, configuration items, within the CMDB. And these records have relationships between each other and those relationships should be bi-directional. We should know how to get from one record to another and then from that record back to the related record. And if we take a look at these relationships you start seeing what those relationships are. For example, Andy is employed by the Acme Corporation. And in the opposite direction, the Acme Corporation employs Andy. That's a very important relationship. And we have to put that in there. These relationships are critical to the success of the CMDB. Remember, without these relationships, this represents an inventory database. We want the relationships so that we better understand the effect of making changes on our services. Clearly, if we make a change to the email service, there are two users that are affected and also it affects the Acme Corporation. That's very important. Now, in addition to these relationships, we need to understand some of the details or attributes. For example, we need to understand what type of record this is and it's a company type. And here if we click on the company type, it'll give us the template for that record. So back to Acme, its unique name. All records must have a unique key, a unique identifier. The status code, here it's active. We can select other ones. This is just an example. The name of uh, the corporation, it's at me, uh, Corporation LLC, the address, etc. There could be many others. This is just a simple scenario. In addition to that, here are the four relationships that the ACME CI has. So let's just go back and take a look at this. Here is ACME. It has a relationship to Andy. It has a relationship to DBoss. It has a relationship to the email service and it has a relationship to the SLA. Those are the four relationships. So let's click on here again. There they are, the four relationships. And if we click on Andy, as you can see, it has a relationship back to the Acme Corporation. There's that two-way communication. And as you can see from this example, Andy happens to be a person CI. and a person CI has different attributes as well as relationships than the company CI.
again, these are just examples. Very good. So you start seeing how the CMDB is created and what those relationships are. Managing and maintaining this is actually very straightforward. Of course, the issue is how do you ensure that people are reactively and proactively updating this database so that we keep track of exactly what we have on our data center floor? And if we don't have exactly um, the, the, the same representation of what we have on a data center floor within the CMDB, then we will have a hard time determining the integrity of the infrastructure. Remember, the CMDB is used by change management for controlling all of the assets, the CIs that we must have under control. So what we want to do is make sure that the CMDB is up to date. If we were to add a new CI, then clearly we must put in the relationships to that new CI. For example, we have a laptop that Andy's apparently going to receive, and we're, we're going to have to identify relationships between this laptop and various other CIs. So if we click on laptop over here, you can start seeing those relationships, those four that we've identified. But in addition to that, there could be more at, uh, relationships that we may want to add to our CMDB, CIs that we want to add to the CMDB. For example, we may want to keep track of the operating system the Windows XP operating system because we may have purchased a certain number of licenses. Maybe keeping track of a service pack level, but because we don't pay for it, maybe that shouldn't be a separate CI, but an attribute. So it doesn't need to be under control. So it doesn't need to be a, a CI. Andy's going to be using email, so he needs MS Office 2010. We certainly need to keep track of how many of those licenses we need. So as you can see, this, these records start representing what we have in our infrastructure to try to keep track of exactly what we have to manage and have under control. Now, in addition to these tangible characteristics, there are other things that are not as obvious. Of course, incident record is one of those. An incident record, problem record, change record, documents, etc. also need to be represented in the CMDB because we must have these under control. An incident record is a CI in the CMDB. And we need to relate this CI, if we have an incident, let's say, with this laptop, with the person who called it in, for example. So if we click on this incident record, here the attributes are very different. These attributes would represent the fields within an incident record or a remedy trouble ticket, for example. And these relationships are are represented through CI so we wouldn't want to type in the user's name because we could make a typo we should really have it related to a CI that exists that exists in the CMDB so it's important to understand the difference between the attributes and relationships remember relationships are to other CIs attributes are not CIs And in this example, if we click on open, we have various different states of the incident record.
So how do we control all of this? That becomes a challenge, especially when we have new projects. This is another representation of the CMDB. We were looking at an entity relationship diagram. Here we're looking, going to look at it from a CI relationship map perspective. Here we've taken the original five CIs down the left hand side and along the top as well. And now you can see the relationships are put into this matrix that define the relationship forwards and backwards. So again, the tool that you use, the method that you use, will be dependent on corporate policies, regulatory requirements, um, architectural requirements. It's governed by each and every organization. And it really doesn't matter how it's done, as long as it's consistent, common within the organization, and everybody has a understanding of what those methods should be, otherwise there will be confusion.